Okay, here we are again, and we're going to be looking at the ceiling grid, and this time we're going to be having a look at how we'd set it up initially on a ceiling that doesn't have a suspended ceiling there already. So here we are in AutoCAD, and we're looking at a very simple room shape here. This is just a rectangle, and if I show you measuring it, it's beautifully 3 meters by 6 meters. And that's very convenient because when I draw my 600 by 600 ceiling tile and I multiply this across, it's going to fit a perfect number of times. So I don't want my offset to be 900, I want it to be 600 on both the rows and the columns. And I don't want the number here of rows and columns to be preset but if I click and drag on the outside of these handles that increases the number of rows and columns. Now if I hover over there yeah, you'll see that my ceiling grid exactly fits my room rectangle. However reality is never as kind as that. Um, you'll notice here that in this instance this room is neatly lined up north, south, east, west. Reality is never like that. <laughs> And as I showed you earlier, the room was exactly um, 6 meters by 3 meters. And again, that's never the case. So what I'm trying to say is that if we had down here an error of, let's say, 2 centimeters or just under an inch across a 6 meter room, which is not unfeasible, then we would have a gap down the side of our tile here, either on this side of the room or on this side of the room. Now to avoid this, what we do is when we're dragging out a ray, we actually take it one tile bigger than the room. And then we move it. So we're going to move the whole array. And I'm just going to move the whole thing a half a ceiling tile, so 300 polar and also 300 down. Now what this gives us is a half a tile all the way around the edges and what this means is if we actually have that two centimeters error here it's actually two centimeters over a half a tile that's cut anyway and it's very difficult for someone to see that error when they come into the room. What we don't want to see is a edge line here which makes the error really obvious when there is a two centimeter gap here and zero gap at this end of the room. Okay, so much more difficult to see if we have a clean half tile cut all the way around. It does use more tiles um, doing it this way. However, what you would realize is that you have a half a tile and a half a tile here and a half and a half here. So you can actually use the half extra from here on this side. The only place you'll really get into wastage is on the corners. So you end up using four tiles more than you would have done otherwise. Again, if you're cutting very accurately, you could cut this tile into four and excluding the saw cuts, you could use the one corner tile, the four parts of it, for each of the corners here. So it does depend on exactly the size of your, your saw cut and whether you can use it or not. You'll also notice these rooms are north, south, east, west, which never happens in reality. What's far more likely to happen is a room shaped like this one. So the first thing we need to do here is set up our own user coordinate system. So I'm going to move this UCS here and align the x-axis. And I'm choosing the long edge here for my x-axis. You don't have to. You can choose whichever one of these lines you like. Um, but bear in mind that will be the line along which your stringers will run. So you could have chosen that line there because it will actually give you the longest single stringer across the entire room. Once you've chosen a line, click over here on top and it will rotate your drawing round to your chosen coordinate system or what's now called a UCS here which is unnamed, a user coordinate system. Same again, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put on my 600 by 600 and I'm going to create an array 
from that ceiling tile. Once more, I'm going to change these to 600 on both the column and the row. And I'm going to click and drag to increase the number. And I'm just going to increase it beyond the edges of the drawing. So beyond the edge of my ceiling by a couple of tiles. And the reason I do it by a couple of tiles is I'm now going to move this whole ceiling shape. So I'm going to go to the move icon, choose the array because that's what I want to move. Nothing else, so I press enter and I'm just going to click. And just for argument's sake, I'm going to move it 300 to the left. And you'll notice I've now got a nice half cut line all the way down here. And I'm now also going to move it by 300 vertically downwards. What I would suggest now is that you have a good look at these edges. And what you're trying to do is not have any tiny slivers left within your room. Now this is what I mean by a tiny sliver inside the room. That corner piece there, as that size, that's okay. Bearing in mind from here to here is 600. So from there to there is probably over 100. That's easily cuttable. What you wouldn't want is that tiny sliver left inside of the room. So we're just having a look to see if we do have any tiny slivers inside the room. And actually it's looking pretty good just there. Okay, so to accept that, what I now need to do is I need to explode this array so that I can delete the parts of it that are outside of my room. And that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm just simply selecting the ones which are completely outside. So I must make sure that I'm not choosing any that are partly inside at all. And if I zoom in, they mustn't select any that have any of their ceiling tile inside of the room. So for example, I wouldn't want to choose that one because it has a piece inside of the room. But I can choose all of these ones. Okay nearly there, just a few more to get rid of. And the remainder we'll have to get rid of by trimming. And the way we'll do that is by going to our trim tool. And for our fence, we're going to select the polyline that is the edge of the room. And now we're simply going to trim out any excess. And you will have to zoom in for this. Uh, you won't be able to get all of the excess just by doing what I'm doing here. As I say, you will have to zoom in. just to get rid of some of the detail here. And do be careful not to get rid of your polyline when you're trimming. If you trim out the polyline and you then undo, what it does is it undoes the whole of your trim action in other words, it takes you right back to the start of when you started trimming stuff. And that gets really frustrating, especially if you do it near to the end and you accidentally trim out some of your polyline and have to put it back in again. Basically what that means is you start trimming from scratch. Now I've left a couple of shapes here. Um, what they are is ones that I didn't quite get rid of when I was deleting the shapes. 
this here is the last of the objects we need to trim and I can't trim anymore so I come out of my trim tool and I just select these two hole tiles that were outside of the shape and just simply delete them and that's how we trim up all of the edges and what we can now do is we can measure across here to that corner point and that will let us see so it's 300 up and it's 300 across and that gives our ceiling fitters uh, a datum point to start their grid pattern aligned with this wall here so it's 300 from this point as well so all they have to do is measure 300 from the wall there 300 from the wall here and 300 from that wall and this will roughly give them a ceiling pattern and they can count the tiles off this grid as well okay i hope that's been useful and thank you for listening